Here's a great irony for you, okay? We see this lesson of abiding in the vine so we can bear fruit. Clearly, this is the last thing that Jesus is saying to the disciples, and it's the very thing that many of the disciples failed at first as they ran back to their worldly jobs and just kind of left the Christian life until he kind of shook them back into it. But let me just give you some irony here. here, here's, an, here here's some irony for you. People generally, people generally overestimate their self-importance. Except where it counts. That's ironic. People generally think that in my life, I'm the most important person at work. I'm the most, they, they could never do without me, all these types of things. They generally overestimate this. It's a, it's a common thing. Yet they will completely miss the things that God actually wants them to be doing in their life. I mean, that's, that's irony right there. Let me give you an example of this. And I hope I can string this together for you that makes sense. But <clears throat> Gen Z or whatever this 15-year-old uh, and younger or 20-year-old and younger generation that's coming up today is, I'm going I'm to give an example of what I've been saying a couple times in our fellowship where I'm saying if you want to understand what's going to happen, you have to understand what happened. The best way to tell the future is to understand what happened in the past. So here we have this Gen Z, these kids under 20, that is the most confused, abused, and just confounded generation, damaged generation. They're saying like 30% now of these kids think that they are some sort of LGBT, whatever it is. 30%. And you're just like, how in the world could something like that have happened? Well, I mean, let's just, let's just take it back to the 50s for sim simplicity, okay? In the 1950s, and I told you a bunch of stats on the family last week. I think it was, what was it, Sunday night? A bunch of stats and when this hockey stick rose up and, you know, people not being married. Let me give you another, another one. So we see this generation that's a complete train wreck right now. And I think there's a lot of confusion there. I don't really think that those numbers are the real um, thing that's going on, but it doesn't matter. There's a lot of uh, physical abuse and damage that's taking place there and very wicked things. You say, how could this happen? In the 1950s, the percentage of stay-at-home moms was about, it, it was 20% of moms that worked outside the home. 80% of moms stayed home with their children. Today, I mean today, it's exactly the opposite. It's 20% that stay at home, and it's 80% that go to work. And you say, wow, how did that happen? Well, one thing that I wish, one thing that I wish Christians were, were better at, and this is what Jesus is talking about, that Satan and the principalities and the powers are very good at, is setting and achieving goals. So if you just think about what happened, you just think about Satan and the principalities and the powers, they had all these mothers at home, and they're like, what in the world? We can't get these kids. we got to get them out of there. So what should we do? What should we do? I know what we should do. We could start a war. I'm not joking. You listen. We could start a war. This is how deep Satan thinks. This is not a conspiracy. This is what happened. We could start a war. Oh, there's this guy who doesn't want the war. We'll shoot him. We'll kill him. President of the United States, 1963, dead. Then now we can start a war. We can start a war and we can spend way more money than we have. And we can create this huge inflation problem. If you want to know what's going to happen, you got to know what happened. Well, we got these war protesters. They started up, and they don't like this war because the war makes no sense. People don't like the draft. They're starting to protest. 
let's create, let's create some hippies. We'll create some hippies. We'll create rock and roll. We'll create moral or we'll just get rid of morality. We'll create this sex, drugs, and rock and roll culture, and we'll just combine that into that anti-war movement, and then nobody will take it seriously because these people are going to be taken as a bunch of weirdos and freaks. That's exactly what happened. And we can continue our war, and we can continue spending all this money that we don't have. And guess what happened? In the 1970s, eventually, eventually people got tired of, you know, their sons not coming home. In the 1970s, eventually, it ended in the mid-70s. And the narrative, you know what's funny? I grew up in the 80s. And the narrative against the anti-war movement, it turns out those hippies on the anti-war part, they were correct. But if you look at the protesters before the hippie movement came on, they were just normal people that are like, hey, this is jacked. What are we doing? This doesn't make any sense. Nobody likes, you know, the, being f their, their, you know, their sons drafted into this disaster that's gonna, that, that ruined a, a, a generation of young men in this country or damaged them. I shouldn't say ruined, but damaged them. My wife just met a, a Vietnam vet the other day at the door, and he, he was, he was th these guys are in their 80s now, and he, he's like, he, it, it affected him his whole life. He's like, you can't, I'm just some normal California kid. You can't take some kid and put him into that and, and think that's not going to hurt. But anyway, the damage was done. And all of a sudden, if you look at, you know, what happened to the economy in the 70s, inflation went through the roof. And if you look at when all the women went to work, it was in the 70s. That's when the graph goes like this. Why? Because they had to. So Satan started the war, and he started all the, the immorality and the culture and all these different things. He got a lot of side benefits and all of it. But ultimately, what, he, what it came down to is we've got to get these moms out of those homes. And he did it. And I started this by saying that people, they, and here's the irony of the whole thing. Let's go back to my irony statement. The irony of the whole thing is people overestimate their importance. And look. I, and people, you know where they do it the most? In the workforce. Let me tell you something. Men and women out there in the workforce, if you die and don't go to work tomorrow, they're going to move on without you. The analogy that I have seen is like someone taking their finger out of a glass of water. And there might be a little ripple, but eventually they're going to move. I don't care how good you are at your job. They are going to be able to move on without you. The difference is for the men, it is a calling. God tells them, go support your family. And instead, he's given this overly, you know, everyone has this self-importance, and he sold this to the women in this country, first out of necessity, but then they started to believe it through the lies of feminism. And it, it's not even important. It's not a matter of, look, I've worked with women in the workforce my entire career. They can do the job, uh, uh, you know, just like the men can do, and all, all these things, and, and whatever. That's not the point. The point is, they are missing where they are actually needed. Yep, that's it. They are missing where God actually wants them. They are missing, and then you look at this generation now that has no one and the men are on board with it. The men are more to blame than the women. They're supposed to be protecting their families, leading their families. And everybody is missing their calling. They put all their importance over here, and these things don't even matter when they're supposed to be doing these things. And Jesus is saying, if you abide in the vine, you won't be confused about that. If you abide in the vine, you will know where your true calling is. You will know where God wants you. You will not have this great deception be able to affect you and your family. Because you will know. You abide in the vine, and you will never misunderstand what God wants you to do. From bearing fruit to protecting your home. 
And, and that's just one example of what happened here. But again, if we want to know how we got here, if we want to know what happened, we, if we want to know what's going to continue to happen, we just have to look at what actually happened. And I mean, we need to set goals. I mean, why is Satan and the principalities and the powers the only one that can set goals like this and follow through on wicked plans like this? Why can't the Christians set goals for their family, for their country, and follow through on those goals? Say, hey, these are lines that we're not going to cross. I mean, that's what we're doing as we abide in the vine. We're drawing lines with our families. Our, our kids aren't going there. You know, our kids, no, 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 I'm not going to give my children over to the wicked, Satan-worshipping psychopath who's going to try to abuse them and destroy them and, 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 and spiritually, eternally ruin them on top of the physical abuse. Abide in the vine and none of this would happen to any Christian. All we have to do is just abide right here. That's it. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer.